Good morning. Well, we begin now ordinary time. We're back to ordinary time. We ask in a special way for the grace as we continue to live out Pentecost in our lives, as we continue to ask the Holy Spirit to come more deeply into our life, into our ministries, into our homes, so that we can grow in holiness as God so desires. So in that spirit of faith, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My dear friends, to prepare ourselves to enter more fully into these sacred mysteries, the mysteries of our salvation, we call to mind our brokenness, our sinfulness, as we ask God for mercy. I confess, Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The good news, I spoke to Father Carlos yesterday. I think he's going to be back probably this Saturday. Hold, cross my fingers. So hopefully be back. Give us a little rest. So we offer this Mass for the repose of the souls of Ernesto and Maria Dutra, Paulino and Isabel Caderon, Ignacio Margaret Vasquez, the intentions of John and Marie Bolden on their 45th wedding anniversary, and a thanksgiving for prayers answered. A reading from the Book of Sirach. To keep the law is a great oblation, and he who observes the commandments sacrifices a peace offering. In works of mercy, in works of charity, one offers fine flour, and when he gives alms, he presents his sacrifice of praise. To refrain from evil pleases the Lord, and to avoid injustice is an atonement. Appear not before the Lord empty-handed, for all that you offer is in fulfillment of the precepts. The just one's offering enriches the altar and rises as a sweet odor before the Most High. The just one's sacrifice is most pleasing, nor will it ever be forgotten. In a generous spirit, Pay homage to the Lord. Be not sparing of free will gifts. With each contribution, show a cheerful countenance and pay your tithes in a spirit of joy. Give to the Most High as He has given to you, generously according to your means. For the Lord is one who always repays, and He will give back to you sevenfold but offer no bribes, these he does not accept. Trust not in sacrifice of the fruits of extortion, for he is a God of justice who knows no favorites. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Gather my faithful ones before me, those who have made a covenant with me by sacrifice, and the heavens proclaim his justice, for God himself is the judge. To the, to the upright, upright, I will show the saving power of God. Hear my people, and I will speak. Israel, I will testify against you. God, your God, am I. Not for your sacrifices do I rebuke you, for your burnt offerings are before me always. To the, to the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Offer to God praise as your sacrifice and fulfill your vows to the Most High. He that offers praise as a sacrifice glorifies me, and to him that goes the right way, I will show the salvation of God. To the upright, I will show the saving power of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Blessed are you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth. You have revealed to little ones the mysteries of the kingdom. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Peter began to say to Jesus, We have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands. For my sake and for the sake of the gospel, who will not receive a hundred times more now in the present age, houses and brothers and sisters, and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. But many that are first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. My dear friends, what have you given up to follow Jesus? Take a moment to think about that. What have you given up to follow Jesus? Peter says this because he's given up quite a bit. Remember, he was a married man. He had a wife, he had children, he had his fishing business. He left everything. Now, he didn't abandon his wife. I imagine he went back and forth, but we know that Peter was gone quite a bit on mission. So he pretty much left his wife with the care of his children. He left his home, his comfort, his stability, his love for his wife to follow Jesus. When we see the life of the apostles, many of them left everything. And most of them died as martyrs. So to follow Jesus, we know there's a cost involved. There's a price involved. And we know this because we're all followers of Jesus, right? So when we follow Jesus, what does that mean? We're not probably leaving our homes, but many have. Father Carlos, for example, left uh, Colombia to come here for three years, leaving his mom, 
his brother. Father Joseph left Vietnam, his mom and dad, to come here. Father Delphine, the same way. Many still leave everything to follow Jesus. So what are you giving up to follow Jesus? See, Jesus reminds us, and it's not easy to accept, to follow Jesus, he says, we must take up our crosses. There is no easy way in following Jesus. There is always a burden involved. Jesus on the cross, a burden involved. Him giving his life for our salvation. Because walking with Jesus means suffering. Those out in the world that do not follow him will reject you, will laugh at you, will mock you. Imagine you telling a person that has no clue of Jesus, yeah, I believe Jesus is in that little bread and the cup of wine. What do you think they're going to say? <laughs> you foolish or something? You've been smoking something? Right? But because we have faith, because we believe, we are here. So there are many that don't. So you will be persecuted. You will be rejected for your belief, your stand for faith. But Jesus says also that when you are given these crosses, you don't carry them alone. He walks with you. He helps you. We never walk alone. It's hard to understand that because we think that we walk alone. It's like the story of the, the man on the, on the sand. And he sees only, he sees two footprints, and then also he only sees one. And he asks Jesus, you know, what happened? He says, well, when you're most difficult, I was picking you up and I held you in my arms. God never abandons us. He walks with us. The problem is sometimes we don't know how to lean on him. We don't recognize that he's truly present to us. But Jesus says something very important. But those who do follow me, who give their lives for me, there's a promise. There's a reward. You will receive tenfold. Isn't that amazing? So often, you know, as Catholics, when we give to the church, we tend to give leftovers. I'll, I'll explain that a little bit. We don't give out of prayer. We don't give out of gratitude. We give our leftovers. See, when you give your best to the person you love, Jesus on the cross, there are no leftovers, right? Jesus gave his very best to his friends, to the world, on the cross. So often when we give back to God, we tend to give our leftovers, and not just in money, in time and talent and treasure. So when we listen to our first reading, it's very important because when we listen to what he says, when a person gives, you give it to God and you give your best. As a lector, you show up on time. You prepare well. As an usher, you're there, ready to serve. As a Eucharistic minister, you're praying before you serve the Eucharist. As a priest, I'm preparing myself to give a homily. You prepare yourselves so that you can help each other grow. That's the purpose of serving. And that's what Jesus did for us. He went to the cross out of love for us to give us life through his death, through his suffering and resurrection. So Jesus reminds us that you and I must strive to enter through the narrow gate, the narrow path. We must strive to follow Jesus, not just giving us our leftovers to God, but doing our very best in everything we do as Christians. The reason so many churches, Catholic churches, struggle financially, because the majority of our Catholics give leftovers to the church. 10% 
are the ones that do most of the work in a church. That's time, talent, and treasure, believe it or not. Because we don't really understand what did I receive from God? What did God give me? And when we recognize that, we hold nothing back. This goes back to giving up your life for God, following Jesus. When you know what Jesus has done for you, there's holding nothing back. It's following Jesus wherever he takes us. And that's why we have people leaving their homeland to go across the world and preach to a nation they have no clue how their culture is, and sometimes they have to learn the language because their love that draws them, that leads them, that guides them. So when Jesus says to him, do not worry, you've given up everything, but there's a reward for the faithful. And we know what our reward is, eternal life. So at this Holy Mass, let us ask Jesus to open our hearts to be more giving of ourselves. Let us pray to the Father who loves us, the God who sent his Son and Holy Spirit to sanctify us. We pray for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, all the bishops, priests, religious, deacons, and all God's people, that we continue to allow the Holy Spirit to transform us, to change us, so that we can be just as generous as God is generous to us. Let us pray to the Lord. Let us pray for the courage to follow Jesus, no matter where it takes us. Let us pray to the Lord. And let us pray for our brothers and sisters, those who are missionaries, those who have left family and home, May the Lord bless them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord In a special way, let us pray for all people who have no faith, who have no knowledge of God's love for them. May we, the people of God, fill with the Holy Spirit, may we take this word of hope to all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Almighty Father, we come before you in faith knowing that we are loved and that you gave the greatest gift of the world, your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, who rose for us. May we live our lives in gratitude for that gift. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, 
For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, a work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name and count our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask for your mercy that what you grant as the source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by his birth, he brought renewal to humanity's fallen state, and by his suffering, canceled out our sins. By his rising from the dead, he has opened the way to eternal life. And by ascending to you, O Father, he has unlocked the gates of heaven. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing your hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, 
and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Myron Cotta, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy, especially Ernesto, Maria Dutra, Paulino and Isabel Calderon, Ignacio and Margaret Vas Vasquez, and all souls in purgatory. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the Supper of the Lamb.
Are you crazy?
Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you fill us in the present age, you may make us a partakers of life eternal through Christ our Lord. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seek in the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Immaculate heart of Mary. St. Joseph. St. Bernard. I gave a challenge for those in my masses that I did this weekend, and the challenge was find a prayer on the internet or a prayer book to the Holy Spirit, because many of Catholics don't pray to the Holy Spirit, and each day ask the Holy Spirit, place before me anyone you would like me to talk to about your holy name, about Jesus. That was my challenge this weekend. Find a prayer to the Holy Spirit, and for 30 days, pray that prayer every day. I guarantee you, you'd be amazed at what the Holy Spirit does to bring people to you to share the name of Jesus. Amen? Amen. Have a blessed day. God bless you all. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Let us go forth. Our Mass is ended.